Introducing. The Daredevils of Hollywood. Okay for camera and sound, Mr. Webster. Good. All right, Hal, now here's the idea. You race the roadster down the street. Swing into the driveway pretty fast, about 45. Go right on through the open doors of the brick garage and plow on through the back wall. Bust the thing up as much as possible. You know what I mean. Sure, leave it to me. I'll tear a hole in that back wall if you can drive a train through. That's the stuff. All right, everybody, this is it. Quiet, everybody. Stand clear of the tape. Now watch it, everybody. Roll them. Stepping on it, all right. Yeah, he's taking the driveway on two wheels. Hit it for the garage. This is going to be big. Hey, watch your cameras, men. From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes. Those daring, unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions. Whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death. Those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth, the Suicide Squad, the movie stuntmen, the Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in presenting this copyrighted radio feature, we are privileged to have as our guest one of the top-notch stuntmen of Hollywood, Cecil Kellogg. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are his own actual experiences. Mr. Kellogg is here in the studio right now, and later in the program, we will bring him to the microphone. But first, come with us as we turn back the calendar and witness some of the thrills which, to him, are all in a day's work. At a small-town railroad station in Southern California, a special train is just pulling in. It is early morning. The station agent, with wide-eyed interest, watches the unusual passengers alighting from the train. Presently, a well-dressed man approaches him with a friendly greeting. Hello there, Dad. You the station manager? Yeah. Well, ain't nobody else, son. And I'll bet you them picture fellas is coming on down here, huh? That's right, Dad. You knew we were coming, eh? Oh, sure. The dispatcher called me on the telephone this morning. Gonna make a picture, eh? Yes, that's the general idea. Yeah, say, this town's having a real boom. Lots of excitement already. See, we ain't never had a picture made here before. Well, that's good. I hope everyone enjoys it. Oh, by the way, where's the best place to get some breakfast? <laughs> well, there ain't but one place, and it's just across the street over there. Oh, I see. Do they serve good food? Well, son, uh, if they don't, just think what I've been going through here for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet it's fine. I'll try it anyway. Are you going in for breakfast, Mr. Kimball? Oh, hello, Cecil. I didn't see you. Well, come on. We'll go into this restaurant. I'll go over your script with you while we have breakfast. Yeah, good morning, gents. Uh, what'll it be this morning? Oh, I think I'll have some ham and eggs. And coffee. Uh, make mine the same, please. Uh, two orders of ham and eggs. Thank you. Now, here's the idea in a nutshell, Cecil. A passenger train passes the station platform at about 15 miles an hour. I see. And what do I do? You jump onto the train from the platform. Well, that's easy enough. Then you climb up on top of the passenger train. By the time you're up there, she's picked up pretty good speed. And then? Well, now, by this time, the passenger train is pulled alongside a freight train, which is going in the same direction, about the same speed. I get it. They're alongside each other on double track. That's it, exactly. Now, here's what you do. You see, Cecil, uh, this freight train is supposed to be running away. You do a transfer from the passenger train to the freight. I understand. The story is that I get on the freight train and stop it. Is that right? That's the idea. You see, uh, then there's another train coming from the opposite direction on the same track the freight is running on. You're supposed to avert a head-on collision. And thereby save the girl, I suppose. <laughs> That's right. Well... How does it sound? Yeah, all right, gents. Here you are. Two orders, ham and eggs. Well, to tell the truth, Mr. Kimball, what the cook just said sounds better to me right now. And now, three hours later, we find the picture company ready to shoot this dangerous scene. The prospect of that hazardous leap from the top of one fast-moving train to another has been drilling qualms into Cecil Kellogg's head for two hours. His nerves are tense. Anxious to get the scene made, he stands on the station platform, puffing a cigarette, awaiting his cue. Hurried glances seek him out. Will he make the jump, or will he, at the last moment, refuse to do it? And now the crucial moment has arrived. The director and his assistant have placed themselves with the camera cue atop one of the boxcars. Everything is in readiness. You ready to roll? 
Yep, let's go. All right, everybody. Here we go. There's Cecil down there, standing on the edge of the platform. Looks, looks like he's all set. Okay, boys, turn him over. And keep grinding no matter what happens. Picking up speed pretty fast. Yep. Here we come to the platform. Cecil's getting ready to jump on. There he goes. That was a clean shot. Hey, this rattler can really travel. Yeah. Look down the tracks. There's the freight. She's loping along, waiting for us. She won't have to wait long. Look at Cecil. He's climbing up the side. Now there he's on top of the coach, just ahead of us. We're overtaking the freight train. Now look, both trains are picking up speed. We haven't got much more speed to gain. Must be making about 45 now. Keep those cameras going, boys. He's getting ready to jump. See, that wind is about to blow him off of there. It's all he can do to stand up. I'm perfectly satisfied so far. He's doing a swell job. We've about got our speed. How does it look in the cameras, boys? It's terrific, Mr. Kimball. All right, now this is it. Give him the signal to jump. There he goes. Oh, boy, look at him leap across there. He landed on top of the freight. Great guns, he fell down. He's about to roll off. Look out, Cecil. He held on. He made it. He's all right now. Oh, man, what a relief, and what a shot. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the daring stuntman who made that thrilling scene, whose job takes him day after day into the very jaws of death. It is with pride that we are able to introduce Cecil Kellogg, interviewed by Glenn Hardy. Well, Cecil, that one almost took my breath away. Say, boy, that certainly was a thriller. It kind of had me going for a minute. Well, tell me, Cecil, were you scared when you fell and almost rolled off that train? Well, they may sound funny to you, but I wasn't scared. At least not then, mm. no? My mind was clear as a bell. I never thought faster or more clearly than I did right then. And how did you feel when it was all over? I was limp as a rag. I'll bet you were. Now, look, Cecil, are you on call at all the studios? Uh, no. I'm under exclusive contract to Universal. But here's something else I'm interested in, Cecil. Do you fellows go in much for, well, good luck pieces and things like that? Oh, I think many of the stunt men do carry little trinkets of one kind or another just for luck. Here's a pocket piece that I'm rather fond of. Hmm. Hey, that certainly is a dandy little gadget, isn't it? But this is really clever. I'll tell you what I'll do, Glenn. If you'll promise to carry this lucky piece with you always, I'll give it to you. Oh, now, wait a minute, Cecil. That may have sounded like a pretty broad hint on my part, but... It really wasn't meant that way at all. Well, I wouldn't think of taking your good luck piece from uh, it. Well, I, I really want you to have it. Just promise that you'll always carry it with you. Well, all right if you insist, Cecil. I promise, and you may know that I'll consider it a prized possession. Thanks a million. But now to get back to some more questions. Isn't timing very important in your work? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, as an is instance here, uh, take that buckboard stunt I did a few years ago. A quick decision there probably saved not only my life, but two others as well. We certainly do want to hear about that in just a moment, Cecil. But right now, let's wait for a word from our sponsor. All right, Cecil. Now, what about that narrow escape? Well, it was on location up at Chatsworth. The idea was a runaway in a buckboard. A man and a woman were supposed to be in the rig. My job was to ride up alongside the team on my horse and do a transfer, get a hold of the reins and stop the team. You know, a rescue. Now, the only horses available that day were a couple of pretty wild ponies that had never been worked before. And I was a little skeptical about the whole thing to begin with. I told the assistant director so. Now, look, Bob, those horses are too frisky for this run. They've never done this sort of thing before. There may be trouble. Oh, I think Charlie can hold them all right. He's a pretty good driver. Besides, there aren't any more horses we can use. Oh, don't you think we'd better wait until tomorrow to make the shot? We can get some other horses in the morning. No, Cecil, it's getting late. We really should get this shot today. Well, it's okay with me, Mr. Blackwell. I, I can take care of myself, all right. I was just thinking of the other people. I know, but we have every reason to believe that everything will be okay. Just do your best, Cecil, and give me this shot. Okay, let's go. All right, everybody. This is the take. Quiet, please. This is it. Please, this. Quiet. Quiet, please. Now, look, Cecil. The rig will be heading for that big hole down there, right beside the tree. It's about seven feet deep. I see. And I stop the runaway horses before they get there, if I'm able. That's it. All right, let's go. Hey, Charlie, hold them back as much as you can. Now, don't give them the line. Okay, Cecil. All right, go ahead, boys. <laughs> Camera. Hey, it looks as though Charlie gave them their heads. They're really running away. Yes, I'm afraid Cecil was right. He's having a hot, tough time catching them. But he's gaining on them. They're headed straight for that big hole. Hurry, Cecil, get up there, boys. He's about to catch them. He's crawling over. 
There's the transfer. Yes, but he's too late. They're going right into that hole. Good grief. Look at that. Watch it. Look out. Hey, Cecil, that must have been pretty bad. Did anyone get hurt there? Oh, yes, we were all bruised up pretty badly. There's no bones broken, though. But it was a mean spill. Well, you didn't have much time to do anything with those horses, did you? No, I had to work fast. You see, they were headed straight for the center of that hole, and if they'd run into it that way, well, the rig would have crashed right on top of Charlie and the woman. I see, and how did you prevent that? Well, I pulled the horses to one side, and we crashed into the edge of the hole. You see, that threw Charlie and the woman clear. Otherwise, they would probably have been killed. Well, I take it that you had to make the scene over next day after all. You're right. And this time, we used the horses that were trained in that kind of work. <laughs> and I guess everything went off smoothly. Yep. Slick as a whistle. Well, Cecil, you stuntmen certainly have some tough jobs to do, but still it must be very fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating, but there's a lot of grief in stunt work. No glory and a lot of hard work. It pays big money, all right, but it's a tough business to learn. And you take the chance of being crippled for life while you're getting the hang of it. I'll bet you do. Well, Cecil, we've enjoyed your visit very much. And on behalf of our listeners, I want to sincerely thank you for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in hoping that we may have you on this program again very soon. Take it easy, old man, and the best of luck.